Hello everybody, CQ the Kid here, and welcome back to Paper Mario. Super Paper Mario, that is. Last episode, we destroyed everything, because we did not accept taking the pure heart of Merlin. Okay, so while you excuse me skipping all this. Yes, Merlin, this time, we are going to take your pure heart of your mustache. And that star point around your neck that I really want so badly because I actually love the thousand year door. Yes, yes, yes. The void will swallow all. It is written. Yes, that is one of the eight pure hearts. Yes, I will. Take this, he shouts. And we got the first Pure heart. And we're already in episode two, guys. Congratulations. We have the pure heart thrusted into our possession. I love that word. Now, great hero Mario, your first task awaits. You must take this pure heart. You must place it in the heart pillar in this town. Tippy will lead you there. Return to me when you are through with this task. Thank you. This way. Now. We can actually do something funny. Instead of following Tippy there, if you just so happen to be fully and jump off this ledge, one, surprisingly enough, it's not a bottomless pit, you don't die, and two, you immediately come to the next heart pillar's floor. What's funny is I always like to think that Tippy's, like, come on, please, is her being annoyed that instead of following her directions, you decide to jump off a cliff. Now, get close and place the pure heart in the pillar by pushing up. Now, when we had it thrust into our possession, it is now our turn. We thrust it into the pillar. And already we are 12.5% of the way done with this game mechanic. Because yes, there are eight. And we have entered the first world. Well, we're going to. Well done. Now let's return to Merlin. You're not so you're not so mad at me about jumping off the cliff instead of listening to you. You're not. Thank you. Now we can't do anything with Tippy yet. I just want to say the la the first episode, the one before this. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. It was really cutscene heavy. Trust me. There's this game gets good. This game gets good. And this is a save block. I don't want to hit it yet because of the fact that, well, in all seriousness, we just got to this point. I'm not going to save yet because, you know, let's plays. We save here and something goes wrong. I don't have the data to show you. I had that problem in Mother 3. I don't want to happen again. Ah, the two of you return. We have Flipside Tower. Look, a door has appeared. It's red. This dimensional door was made to lead the hero to another pure heart. Yes, somewhere beyond this door lies one of the seven other pure hearts. Tippy, you must use your power to help Mario find this pure heart and return here. Of course. And Mario, I have something to give you that will aid you on your journey. It's a candy cane piece of plumbing. The return pipe. A magic pipe that returns you to Flipside from afar. You can actually use it in Flipside as well. With this, you can be able to return to Flipside from anywhere in the universe. Use it whenever you feel like you must return in a hurry. To return is the return pipe, go, just go to important things on the menu screen. Just remember that in some areas, the signal from Flipside might not reach. You lied! The Lepronoscus foretells that a hero will meet a dimensional governor. And from him, the hero will learn the dimensional technique. I am almost certain this refers to my friend, the Flip Wizard, Bestovius. So now go through this door and seek out Bestovius! Now let's get going. Let's go! Into... A cutscene. <laughs> the void has been ripped into the dimensional fabric. Yes, Count Blake is pleased. All is gone as foretold in the dark Panasticus. 
Now it is just a matter of time until all worlds meet their demise. Blech. Wow, that's just super gallant. Yeah, first you'll erase all these naughty words, and then you're gonna build a perfect world without war and all that other icky stuff. Yes, yes, no one likes the icky stuff. Yes, a perfect world. Sounds magical. <laughs> I can hardly stand the weight. Sorry I'm late. What well, blazing bogrets? How'd I be myself here? What going on? Me, 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 me. Oh, Chunks, you big silly. Did you oversleep or something? I guess it's kind of hard. Huh, to be on time, though, when you got muscles instead of brains. Hey! You can't fool me with that crazy shape shifting hula county. It's Mimi, isn't it? Show you respect for the count. You can't go bar in his face, lass. Yeah, <laughs> how delightful, Mimi. Almost as dapper as Count Black. Oh, golly, please. Thanks, Count. With you around, it's nothing but big smiles and all the time. Hanging out with the Count, that's my idea of a perfect world. Uh, and here I thought Mimi's ideal world it was a gem filled pool with funky lifeguards. Hey, Dimensio, have you been reading my diary? I mean, um, never mind. By the way, in case you're wondering, this is supposed to be a throwback to when Peach read Bowser's diary in the first Paper Mario game. <laughs> well, different strokes for different minions. After these wrong worlds are ended, Count Black will make all your dreams come true. But for that to happen, we must follow the instructions of the Dark Pronosticus. Yeah, about that. Just an FYI, got an urgent member for your inbox. Apparently, there's been some unapproved the interdimensional activity lately. Yeah, I'm thinking it's the hero of the prophecy. We're gonna need an action plan for this guy. A dimensional interloper? And possibly the hero. Are you sure of it, Nastasia? Interesting. Used Count Black. We must put an end to this nuisance. Count Black! Let me get this right in me brain. The hero Nastasia's going on about your enemy? Then you gotta come loose on him. You gotta. I'll give him a nice taste of old chunks. Very well, old chunks. I'll leave the hero chunking to you. Do not fail, Count Black. You can count on me, Count. I'll rain down like a fat thunderstorm. I swear it. Mimi, the mention of. You should tag along. You can witness a proper chunking. Hmm, I do enjoy a good chunking. Well then, I believe I'll head out as well. <laughs> so, hero, you would defy Count Black. Then hurry, for your world's end draws near. <laughs> Black! Welcome to another cutscene. Ahem, I want to get the intro right! Mario was called upon once again to save the world. No small task. Could he prevent Count Black from pulling off his sinister plot? Would Mario reunite with Princess Peach? A truly interdimensional adventure was about to begin. Chapter 1-1 The Adventure Unfolds! Welcome! To Lineland. I feel the pure heart, but it's still far from here. Merlin told us to find his friend, Bestovius, to learn that dimensional technique. We better go find him. One more thing. If you want to learn about anything, just use my power. I know about many things. Simply point your Wii Remote at the screen, and Tippy will focus on where you want. Then just press A over anything framed in red to hear more about it. Feel free to ask Tippy about anything or anyone you want. We're going to actually go over this in a little bit. Actually, how about right now? Hey, excuse me, Tippy. Eh. Eh. 
I hate point of controls. It's a Goomba, one of Bowser's minions. Max HP is one and attack is one. That's right, they nerfed the Goomba even more. It really puts the under back in underlings. It has no remarkable traits. They are pretty much the lowest of the low. But I hear Goombas do have their fans, so what can you do? In case you're wondering, unlike other Paper Mario games, you cannot actually fight RPG style in this game. Which is something a lot of people have a critique above, well, above him about. And I am actually one of them. I did like the RPG aspect of the other Paper Mario games. And it's kind of, it's a little sad to me that it did not transfer over to this game. But before we go on even more about that rant, we want to talk about the Squiglet here. Yes, I know what its name is. This is a Squiglet. Sorry about the spoiler. Two seconds before its name was on screen. It's a small little creature that scurries around on its many legs. Its max HP is two. And attack is one. There isn't much to say about Squiglets. When it spots an enemy, it gets excited and hops up and down. All you need to know is that these guys are basically your true Goombas. They are the ones that have not one, but two health points. There's another save block. We don't need to worry about that. And... Oh? We got a problem. No one's home. Does anyone even live here? This is not an empty house. There's something in this room. I can feel it. I can help you find hidden things. Why don't you use my power to look around? I am pointing. Anyways, Tippy can also find invisible objects. She can make things visible for you simply once you point to them on the pointer. It's a door. Let's go inside. Gee, I didn't know this was a door. Thank you for that insight. Oh my god, it's another star point! Hmm? What is this mega monster that stands before me? And how does it have the audacity to address my multicolored glory? How did these flimsy whiskers detect my secret door? Wait right there, red shirt, conspicuous white gloves, jaunty hap. Ah, you are garbed in the rich cloth of the hero of prophecy. You must be the great hero impersonator. Anime fall. What a costume! You look like you leaped at the pages of the Prognosticus! This is Mario. He's dressed like this because he is the hero. Merlin told us to find you. Merlin! Early his full-bodied beard! That's a beard? I thought it was a mustache. Rivals his my hairy magnificence! I did not want to know about your hairy magnificence, but whatever floats your boat, dude. If Merlin thinks you are the true hero, you probably are. I think. Well then, as the Ancient Prophecy foretells, I must always hope so about you the agent secrets of dimensional flipping! For an fee of 10,000 coins. But that's preposterous. You can't charge to teach the hero of the prophecy. Why not? You win the great and splendiferous best always a certain expenditures. Why should the hero get the world delivered to him on a well-garnished platter? Because if I don't, the world's going to die. Think about that, sir. The world will die if I do not get this power. Just give it to me already. Or everyone's going to die. These heroes think you get away for a second. People down for free skills. Even though it's going to save the world, and if I don't give it to him, everything's going to be doomed. A mere 10,000 coins should be nothing for a hero of the universe. What do you say? No. I see. So be it. I was able for taking all the coins in your pocket. Do we have a deal? No. Still, you refuse. So be it. No one makes me it. I'll waive the nominal fee and teach you for free. That's right. You made me waste all this time. For all we know, several worlds are dead. Because you are being lazy, sir. Do you agree to this? Yes. Skintalizing. I don't know how to say that. I am so sorry. Let us begin. Shabim. Flip out. Shazam. Oh, wait. That's my Wrong genre. I best always have granted you the ability to flip between dimensions. For I say you to slip between the very fabric of space and flip between 2D and 3D. Well, what do you think? Mind blowing, is it? What does this AI speak of? I assure you, we are being watched from another dimension. Those beings will understand, but you lack the mustache or full comprehension. Just remember that you can use this ability to find hidden items to secure facts. 
But beware, use your ability too long and you will lose HP. By that he means now what you flip. You can flip into 3D! Flipping between 2D and 3D will get through tricky situations and find secrets. While you're flipping, the flip gauge in the upper left will start to drop. If your flip gauge runs out, you'll start to take damage, so flip back and forth then. Flip back into 2D to build up your flip gauge again. So yes, as you can see, we now are in a 3D environment rather than a 2D one. But the longer we stay in it, the more that gauge falls down. Flipping back into 2D here will allow the gauge to fill back up. The gauge will disappear, it will not fill up when you're transitioning rooms. And just in case you're wondering, if you flip now, you will find that there is a fire burst. Broils enemies with searing flames. But I think we are at a good stopping point here, guys. We just learned the dimensional flipping, we met Bestovius, and we entered Lion Land. That's a lot done. And well, before we end it off, we got one more new mechanic. I think I can talk about this. We got a capture card that's been used. Catch cards are a different item. We'll go over those at a later date. This is a squiggle card. If you collect an enemy's catch card, you do bonus damage to it. The more catch cards, the better. You can boost your power by double, triple, or more. So, I want you to point out, Mario has one attack. You can check that by pushing pause. Squiglets have two HP. Now we do two damage because we have the squiggle catch card. So catch cards will effectively double the amount of damage you do to a certain enemy. So, just saying, if you gain enough cards, you can do just so much damage to an enemy, you could probably make the game crash. I'm pretty sure someone's found a way to do it. Anyways, like I said, this is a good stopping point. I think we're going to end this off here. Actually, I know we're going to end this off here. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Super Paper Mario, and I will see you all next time in the next episode. See you all then.